Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today we're talking mobile app development with Python. So before we get started, just a brief overview. We know that Python is arguably the most popular language out there, especially with beginners. And beginners, they kind of want to see some tangible outputs for the programs that they write. Obviously, when you start out, you're writing these console applications, you print out hello world, you start working with if statements, for loops, and then you want something more. So as your learning progresses, you want to develop some real world applications, things like websites, mobile apps, and games. So mobile apps is one facet of these, and this is what we're going to be talking about today. This video is meant for people of various skill sets. You can be a beginner in Python, or you can be someone who's a bit more advanced and is looking to learn more about mobile development with Python. So we will cover two beginner friendly methods and two more advanced methods. A small disclaimer here, we will cover some ways in which you can build mobile apps with Python. However, these are not all of them. There are other ways, but they're kind of less popular. And in the programming space, when something is really unpopular, it becomes increasingly difficult to find actual resources or help online, which kind of makes things much more difficult for beginners. So as a beginner, you want to have a community, you want people to answer your questions on Stack Overflow, you want more resources, more tutorials. So obviously when something is less popular, it's going to be less favorable for a beginner. Okay, let's start. So one of the first beginner friendly methods is Kivi. So Kivi is a Python library, it's open source, and it's used for building cross platform UIs for platforms such as Windows, Linux, Mac OS, Android, iOS, and more. So it's really, it has a really wide range of applications, but it's extremely popular for mobile development. And it's arguably the most popular mobile development library for Python. So when you search mobile development with Python, this will almost always be the first thing that comes up. It enables the use of native libraries on each platform. So Kivi itself, the UIs that you build will not be native. And what does native mean? So let's actually pause for a second and talk about that. So native means that let's say I develop an app for both Android and iOS. If the app is native and it uses the native functionalities, this means the interface will look exactly like most Android apps on your phone. So if we're building for Android now, if we're talking Android, what does this mean? It means that the UI elements such as the button, the text box, the text itself, the interface will use the same elements as other Android apps. This will be native. Now, on the other hand, if it's not native, then the app will look the same on both Android and iOS and the UI elements will not use the native Android or iOS elements. They will use the Kivi ones. So for Kivi, they have their own. They look pretty good actually, but they're not native. But however, you can use native libraries through different custom functionalities on the platform. So I'm not going to go into too much depth here, but essentially you get the idea. Another thing that you should note about Kivi is it's based on OpenGL, which means you can use some GPU functionalities. So developing games is encouraged or things with other, uh, other applications that require some GPU usage. So here, this is definitely encouraged, which is another plus for Kivi. There's also Kivi MD, which is a set of material design components. So material design is a type of principle in which uh, material design compliant components follow this principle. And it's more of like some design stuff, but it's also another thing to note. And also you can use the KV language. So they have their own type of special syntax in which you can write your UIs in a pretty verbose method. And in this case, it makes writing the UIs much faster. Obviously there will be a bit of a learning curve when it comes to learning new syntax and new language, but it's definitely useful and it enables you to write large UIs in a very short amount of time. All right, next is Beware. So Beware is the second most popular platform for building mobile apps with Python. It's actually a set of tools. So with Kivi, you just have like Kivi, you have to learn Kivi to build Kivi apps. Here, it's more of like a collection of tools. You can use some of these tools or you can use all of them. They provide some sort of stack. So think of it just like as a stack, a collection of tools. These tools, obviously you can use them for Windows, Mac, Linux, as well as Android and iOS. Another thing is it provides some customization and third party integration. So it's pretty flexible in integrating third party tools and plugins and allowing customized UIs. So here, this is another plus for Beware. Now note that Beware is actually a very ambitious project. They attempt to provide a lot of tools and a very large stack 
but however a lot of them are still in development and they get updated very frequently so it's a very active project i would say that this is definitely a project that is set to grow in the coming years and become more and more popular in the python community so what are some examples of the tools that they provide so some examples firstly is toga so toga is a gui library so it's an interface here you have all the buttons the text boxes the labels and all the different ui elements so you can either use toga so if you're developing a beware application you can choose to use toga or you can choose to use another python interface library such as pyscythe so here what i'm trying to say is that you're not you're not obliged to use this one library this is what i mean that beware is a set of tools you're not obliged to use all of them you can use some of them and you can use all of them so it's all up to you another tool is briefcase so briefcase is arguably their best tool it's a tool for packaging Python programs into distributable, uh, distributable artifacts for these different platforms. So here you can use it to build these Android and iOS apps, as well as apps for the different platforms. Finally, another example of a tool is Rubicon Java, which is a library for working with Java libraries using Python code. So here you can benefit from existing Java libraries using the Python code. So this is really important if you're developing for Android. So now we're going to talk about some of the more advanced methods in which you can develop these mobile apps with Python. So firstly, you have Django. So if you've heard of Django, you've probably heard of it used in the context of web development. It is the probably the most popular Python framework for web development, Django along with Flask as well as Fast API recently. So Django is pretty popular for web. Can we use it for mobile? Well, here's how this would work. So Django is a REST framework. You can use it as a backend for your application. What does this mean? You would combine your backend with a frontend client, such as React Native or Flutter, for building these cross-platform apps. So think of it like this. You have a mobile app, you have the interface, this is the frontend, so the interface is what you see, the buttons, the text boxes, things like that, and you have the backend. So this is where your data gets processed. So if you're signing in, the sign in text box where you will write your email and the button which you will press, these are the front end. And then your actual data and the authentication process when we verify whether this is um, whether this is an actual real password and email, whether the user can be authenticated, this is all in the back end. This will be processed on the back end. So here, what will happen is your front end client will take this data, it will send it to a Django backend, which will do all this processing. And this is kind of how this mobile app will work. So here, an example of this is React Native. So React Native is used for mobile applications cross-platform. So both Android and iOS apps can be built with React Native. I have some experience with React Native. It's a really nice framework. However, it is a beast on its own. So when I tell you that you can build these Python mobile applications using a Django backend, so here, here you will write Python code using Django, but with a React Native front end, here you're going to require some experience with JavaScript and React Native to be able to actually write this code for the front end. So here I'm telling you that, okay, you can use Python here, but with kind of like a small asterisk. So here you will have some other requirements. The same goes for Flutter. So the front-end client does not have to be React Native. It can be Flutter, but you also have to learn Dart and Flutter to be able to do that. So it's definitely a very possible, like it's a very good option. It's possible to learn it, but you will require some additional skills. If you already have experience with React Native, that's perfect. Now all you have to learn is Django and now you can build your mobile apps. But Again, if you're a beginner in Python, Python's your first language, you have no other experience anywhere else, then I do suggest going back and starting out with Kivi or Beware. Because obviously they're only built in Python, so it's much more direct and much more simple for a complete beginner. Now the same concept can be applied for the following, which is Flask. So Flask is a RESTful framework and you use it to create these server-side APIs. So what are the APIs? They're kind of like the middleman who will transfer your data between the front end and the back end. So what we were talking about earlier. And you can use Flask to send the data, to, to receive the data actually from the front end, and then you will process these requests. So the same thing we talked about, the same kind of concept. Now, 
Note that the development method between Django and Flask is obviously different because they're different framework and different capabilities. I'm not going to go into too much detail. I have compared them in a previous video. Do check it out if you're interested. But anyway, it's like the same concept. So here we have this Python backend and you have React Native or Flutter on the front end. So this is how it would look like. Very similar to what we discussed in the previous page. Here you have your React Native front end. It talks to your Flask backend and they exchange data. So this is another way. Of course, here again, you also need some um, uh, skills in React Native. You need some JavaScript experience or you need to learn Flutter or Dart. So here again, it's a bit more difficult. You need some other skills. It's definitely not suitable for a total beginner in programming and someone whose Python is their first language. Okay, so I've described these four different libraries and frameworks. Now, what do you choose? So I stress this a lot in my video, your level of skill and the place you are at in your programming journey is definitely important here. If you're someone whose Python is your first language, you haven't been exposed to other things such as JavaScript yet, then definitely disregard Django and Flask for now. So you're a beginner, you're learning Python, you have some Python experience, and you want to develop mobile apps, I would say get started with Kivi or Beware. Now, how do I choose between Kivi or Beware? I will tell you my personal opinion. I would say get started with Kivi. Kivi is much more mature, so it has been established for a longer period of time, and it's a very popular. So it's almost always the most popular version you will find when you search for mobile apps with Python. There are plenty of tutorials online on YouTube. I'm actually planning to make some more Kivi tutorials on my channel, but there are definitely other more advanced tutorials online, other channels and things like that. So lots of resources, lots of community. So it's definitely a plus. You will not find yourself at a roadblock with no one to help you. Beware is less popular. So I would recommend if you are interested in the flexible tools that Beware provides, get started with Kivi, build your first few mobile apps, become experienced so that you're less reliant on the help of others, and then you can get started with Beware. But for a beginner, I would say start with Kivi, for sure. Now, on the other hand, so you're a developer, you have some experience with web development, you've worked with Django before, you've worked with Flask, or maybe you've worked with React Native. Here, you have all of these options. So you have the Django or the Flask option and whatever front end client you like. So if you're a Flutter developer, you're just getting started with Python, you want to use Django or Flask, go ahead. You can definitely do that. So you would get Flutter and then you choose one of the frameworks for your backend. Other than that, you can also learn. So if you're interested in learning, if you're a bit more advanced as a programmer and you want to learn Flutter or React Native, you can. However, do note that learning React Native or Flutter from scratch will take a considerable amount of effort and time from your end. So if you're okay with that, then definitely go for it. One last thing you should note is that in the market, React Native and Flutter developers will always be more favored over Kivi developers. So very rarely will you find job positions asking for a Kivi mobile developer. So here I'm not saying this will make you a career. So you will not be a Kivi developer for life. However, it's a very good skill to add. It's very good for beginners to start building these mobile apps. You can build pretty advanced stuff with Kivi. So here I'm not saying that it's a stupid framework then it's not useful. Definitely not. It's a very good framework. You can build some really cool things with it. Games, social apps, um, like shopping apps, things like that. But as a career, so in the market, you will find more positions asking for React Native or Flutter. So here, if we're talking cross-platform apps. So as a beginner, here's a journey that I would recommend. So you start le learning Python, you learn some Python stuff. N next, you want to develop some mobile apps. So you learn Kivi, you build these mobile apps. Maybe you build some desktop apps. Maybe you build some web apps with uh, Django, Flask. Then after that, what you can do is you can start expanding, getting exposed to other languages and learning things like React Native with JavaScript or Flutter or other similar frameworks. And then 
you ha- you are very marketable as a developer and you have some very necessary skills. So this is if you want to go the mobile development route and if you want to go cross platform. You can always be a native developer and work with Android and iOS directly. So that's really it for this video. That's just some advice from my end. I do hope you found this video useful and that you now know which framework you want to learn next and how you will be developing your mobile apps. Do let me know in the comments what you chose and what you plan on building. Hopefully I can follow this up with some tutorials on using these frameworks to build some apps. And yeah, that's really it for this video. I hope you had a nice day and bye bye.